Hey all, I said that I would be sharing some stories, you know, stories from other divine masculines because a lot of divine feminines feel that the divine masculines don't feel anything or don't feel the same way as the divine feminine or that they don't get spiritually activated because the divine feminines tend to do all the spiritual work and we're doing all the healing and the divine masculines aren't doing anything, which is not true, okay? But I do want to let you know divine masculines really are going through a lot right now, especially. They all go through it at their own time, but it seems like as a collective, a lot of divine masculines are going through it right now. And I really, really wanted to share this email and and among other emails, right? If I get more emails from divine masculines, I think it would be really helpful. I kind of want to do a segment where I read um, personal stories. I will be changing names and, you know, certain things that can giveaway clues about people. I just really felt that this particular email was so powerful. And I think it was so brave of this man to be so vulnerable to express what's going on and to express, you know, to to share about his past that he most likely is ashamed of, but now wants to overcome it and wants to be a different person, a better person. So I feel like this can give hope to a lot of divine feminines. So here goes. Hello, I just came across your podcast last night, precisely following 24 hours of the most foreign, intense, and overwhelming emotions I have ever experienced. Never have I ever contacted someone unsolicited like this, but I feel so eternally grateful and in awe that the profound situation I find myself in has an explanation. It has a purpose. I am the very last person I thought would feel one one hundredth of the things I am feeling right now. I had a tough upbringing, did seven military deployments in nine years, and served, well I'm not going to say where he served at. I have been a man of complete logic and enjoyed a toxic ego filled single life of hookups and situations that always left the woman feeling like I was the one when I reciprocated and related to nearly none of the similar feelings, completely feeding my ego. Hundreds of women while legally married. When I say I am the last person I imagine these feelings in, it doesn't take long to see how I've lived to understand why. In the last few hours, you have changed my life. That really warms my heart. Oddly enough, someone who thinks I am their twin flame I'm just going to call her Brittany, sent me your podcast weeks ago. She sent long, beautiful messages trying to explain this to me, and I saw the long messages and the link to some Spotify thing and immediately closed the chat and never opened it again. After experiencing nearly everything you have discussed thus far on your podcast and while crying uncontrollably and in complete solitude last night over someone else, I'm going to call her Christina, let's say Brittany and Christina. Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Something compelled me to read Britney's message that I all but ignored just weeks ago. Not because I knew or hoped there was something there for me, but because I was, am, so distraught over the one I believe is my twin flame, Christina, that I just wanted to reach out to Britney to say sorry and thank you to her because for the first time in my life, I have some reference of the understanding of pain I have placed upon all these women that believe me to be their one. Little did I know, I read her beautiful messages crying even more and then clicked on your podcast link she sent and then even more shocking and overwhelming emotions and discoveries entered my being. I can't believe how accurate this is. Immediately following during my dark night, uh, during my own dark night of the soul, I randomly go to an old chat and hear about twin flames. The ghosting, the number patterns, the overwhelmingness, my plan to enter a church again this morning for the first time in a very long time, the having been married to a soulmate, the uncontrollable emotions, Christina, my divine feminine spirit, having spent the last eight months on a deep spiritual journey of her own now dating someone she feels is her guide, but not her person, that I am, and so much more. Sorry for the long and unsolicited message. I just wanted to say thank you and express how valid what you have shared has been for me. I am in awe. Thank you. I am in awe. I was in complete awe. I had tears coming down my face when reading this email. 
because it is a lot. We don't expect men in situations like this to feel this way, to feel so strongly about a woman, right? We think that they're always going to be so ego-driven. And here is this man who's had a very rough upbringing. He's had, you know, what one would consider a shameful past, but he is looking beyond that. He wants to get better. It takes a lot for a man to be vulnerable, let alone admit their past. Like, I'm sure he's very shameful of it, but your past does not make you who you are anymore. The fact that this man is recognizing his own past mistakes, he's taking accountability, he's, he's owning up to it, right? He's, he's not denying what he's done and he's being vulnerable, which is huge, right? When a man is vulnerable and expresses his emotions and is, it doesn't let his ego get in the way, that is the sexiest, most humble and loving state a man can be in, straight up. So I give props to this man as much as, you know, he's done harm in the past or whatever it is. No, nobody is perfect. We all have flaws. We have all sinned. We have all done stupid shit in our past. Okay. But you want to let go of that. You want to forgive yourself for that. You cannot be ashamed of your past anymore because your past does not make you who you are today. Everybody's changing. You know, there's a, a mass awakening going on in the world. And when you're on this journey, you are not going to be the same person you were even yesterday. Like there's times I look at myself from the past a week ago, two weeks ago, a year ago, two years ago, like whatever it is, I feel like I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly changing. I hope that more divine masculines see this and I hope that they realize that they should confront their divine feminines and tell them how they feel because you have nothing to lose, right? But I know that a lot of divine masculines fear this because they're afraid of rejection. In today's society, a lot of men are afraid of rejection and women too, but the divine masculines are always afraid of rejection, which is why the divine feminine wants to show them love, wants to make sure that they know that they are loved. But the divine masculine doesn't know how to receive that love, doesn't know how to accept that love because they didn't get that kind of love at all. It is pure, unconditional love. Anyway, as a divine masculine, I want you to try not to be afraid to love your divine counterpart. Stop running from this true divine love because this person wants to love you. It is crazy, it is intense, it is so strong and powerful, but it's real. It is real, genuine love, okay? I know nobody's used to this kind of love. This kind of love only happens once in a lifetime, but don't run away from that kind of pure love. And, um, and don't be ashamed of your past. You're forgiven. You are forgiven. You are all, all divine masculines are forgiven. Okay, your divine feminine loves you.